Okay, hi. This is uh, this is part four of my novel, Jihad at Java Jills. And um, if you like what you, if you want to see more of it, and you like what I present, uh, I'm going to present part of the novel in DVD and CD version. Uh, and you think, wow, there's got to hear more of this stuff then get a YouTube account, upload this video to it, give it the title Jihad at Java Jills Part 4. And that way someone else has done the same thing who might have Part 5 or Part 6 or something like that. Uh, you'll cause a, collab a, group collabor a, a group collaboration where you can find out what's going on and put it in the order. This is like a game. You know, kind of like uh, finding the missing pieces, like uh, the puzzle you put together. And in the process, when you do that, you think, hmm, there's also all these videos about Islam that expose Islam to the public. I mean, I mean, they expose Islam and let you know the threat that Islam poses and also how the Quran and Hadith blow it. Uh, videos by David Wood, Christian Prince, and uh, others that are really great at exposing Islam, I feel. And in the process, we might... Uh, keep uh, uh we we might <laughs> keep from going the way of europe you know we might uh, uh <laughs> not have to pay the jizya tax the extortion tax Quran Quran 9 1 through 5 and Quran 9 29 under the threat of death and it was 85 percent of what a christian makes in earnings under isis and mosul so anyway that's the jizya tax so anyway i'm going to begin part four here of Jihad at Java Jills. Here it goes. All right. As, as Willard's childhood friend continued to shout stuff about him that actually wasn't true, Brian thought about Jesus and the shoe bread excuse. He, oh, you know, I've already read that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll continue here. He also remembered many times his friend wanted to fight him out of boredom, telling him, that he want he he wanted he he wanted Brian to uh, sock him in the head with all his might, believing that he could take anything Brian Richardson could uh, dish out on him. The more cowboy that's the name of uh, that's the pet name uh, Brian Richardson gave his uh, friend Willard Bruce. Uh, then he, he, he gave him that. See, he did, of course, he never calls him cowboy to his face. He calls him Will. Uh, the more cowboy yelled out in the neighborhood that he, Brian Richardson, was an insane tranny, tranny fag, the more Brian paced about thinking he'd take Willard up on his offer about punching him in the head uh, to see if he really could take a punch, like he said, and fighting him, quote, out of boredom, out of boredom. Yeah, out of boredom. Brian realized that his friend loved to fight. That he that that it, that it made him feel like a man, and that he never lost a fight, even after letting the guy he was fighting get in the first punch. Actually, uh, get in get in the first punches. Willard laughed at getting his nose broken and cuts on his on his head. Although shorter in height compared to Brian, and although having some arthritis for being in his 50s, Willard was very powerful, claiming to have beaten guys up in prison who tried to, quote, queer him. Could you please leave the premises? Asked Brian. Willard quit screaming out, Brian's a fag, and said, you know, Brian, what you do with Muslims is insane. Very stupid and insane. You're insane. You know that? Insane. Only fags waste their lives away doing what you're doing, what you do behind a computer screen, hating on Muslims. Trying to be calm, Brian started losing his calm manner when he realized his his old friend was really speaking from the heart about him. Hurt, Brian said with growing sadness in his eye, with growing growing wildness in his eyes. If I'm so insane, faggy, and stupid to you, hateful to you, then you need to leave such an insane, faggy, stupid, hateful guy like me, don't ya? Make me leave, faggot, said his friend with fury in his eyes, with fury in his eyes. 
Okay, I'll make you leave, said Brian, walking out the door. Bring it, bitch, said his friend with wild excitement in his eyes with the knowing that he was finally going to be fighting his faggy intellectual childhood friend, actually beating up some guy, uh, cowboy, actually uh, was going to beat up, beat up some guy uh, he secretly thought Brian felt uh, highly superior to. How's this? shouted Brian, smashing his fist into Willard's skull, shattering the bones in his right hand. Is that what you like? shouted Willard. Oh, excuse me. Is that all you got? shouted Willard. Well, said Brian, not feeling the pain yet. How's this? Uh, how's this? And he kicked Willard, kicked Willard on the side of the face, spinning him around and uh, away from him. Brian pushed his friend down and started kicking him. How's this? Neighbors came out to watch the fight, shocked and scared that someone they took as friendly and mild-mannered was doing something like this to his one and only friend. Willard got up and laughed, saying, "You, oh, you, you're not, you not only hit like a pussy, you kick like one too, faggot. Bring it, bitch." Well, how's this then? Shouted Brian, kicking him again to the side of the face. "Ooh, that's real. That really hurt." Shouted Willard. No, I lied. You still kick like a pussy. Brian started kicking and using his left hand to attack, making, uh, asking him with each punch or kick, back with each kick or either punch or back kick, how's that? How's this? How's that? Making smacking and kicking, smacking and kicking his laughing friend all about the lawn. Willard just continued to laugh. My lady old... My eight-year-old mom punches harder than you, and she's in a wheelchair. And she's wheelchair-bound. You don't have a hair on your ass," laughed his friend like a cowboy. Feeling frustrated, Brian backed off from Willard and went into his home. "Hey, come back! Make me leave, faggot! I'm still here. Come back, you cowardly faggot! I I let you get it in your shots. Now it's my turn. Come back, faggot! Why don't you come back and fight me like a man instead of a cowardly faggot?" It was then that Brian decided to call the cops. Brian thought he thought his friend left, but found out later that his friend went over the fence in the backyard to pull up Brian's pot plants. He was planning on using his painkiller as painkillers for his cancer since he was allergic to morphine, making him feel as if he was underwater and encased in suffocating plastic. With morphine, with morphine it was lungs. What are lungs for? Got uh, four more minutes left. Actually, less than four minutes. Okay. Lungs? What are lungs for? When the cops arrived, Brian's friend was nowhere to be found. Your friend uh, has tangled with us before, said one of the officers, a young, tall, handsome cop in his 20s. The pretty uh, policewoman that was with him told Brian that he should just that he should get a restraining order against him that he threatened to snap the necks of his mom and later stepdad should they kick him out of the house and put a straining order on him. Wow, I didn't know that. Also threatened, to, also threatened to burn their houses down. Also threatened to burn their house down, said the male cop. Prison has a tendency to do that to you, said the female. Brian actually found himself still trying to stick uh, up with his friend, saying his first stepdad molested him, or so he claims. The female cop responded back with, When you're an addict or a boozer, it's always someone else's fault. They play victim to win sympathy out of you, so you will uh, give them more money for booze or whatever. Brian Sally shook his head for, Yes, I understand. You need to put a restraining order on him. You need to put a restraining order on him because you're only enabling him, said the male cop. An hour later, Brian tried to sleep but found himself pacing. He had guns, but didn't want to use, the, use, use one on his friend. Right when he thought he was ready for sleep, his, phone, his, his cell phone rang. It was Cowboy telling him to meet him at the canal so he could cave in his skull with his, fi cave in his, skull with his fist. Brian remained calm and said, now, why would you want me to do that when you say I didn't hurt you because I punched like a pussy? You put three knots on my head, asshole. I'm going to kill you. 
Oh, so I don't punch like a pussy. Can you get your story straight, please? Fucker, get out here to the canal now. Yeah, fucker, get out, get out here to the canal now. <laughs> Brian smiled and said, no, this fag needs his beauty sleep. Remember the gun I shot the Koran in front of you with uh, on the side of the road? Well, I reloaded it, so get me to fight you, okay? And with that, Brian hung up and went to bed after making sure his car alarm was working. Instead of sleeping, he tossed and turned, worrying that he might have destroyed a nearly 60-year friendship with Willard. Yeah. I'm sorry, I had to... Uh, Add something here. Then remembering, oh, what's, what time is it? Oh, okay. Got less than a minute. Yeah. Then, re then remembering that he was dying of liver cancer, he thought to himself, I'm going to sell this place dirt cheap, live up in the Berkeley Hills, and die up there before my million dollar rent is due. Brian finally fell asleep thinking that the only good thing about cancer was that it allowed one to get one get some of their life in order. In the morning, Brian found out found one of his car tires flat. No doubt by a cowboy, he thought. By the cowboy, he thought. Well, yeah, no doubt by the cowboy, he thought. Well, I'm planning. Uh, well, I'm not planning on going anywhere just yet. I gotta stop here. Bye.